Alright, so here's my third video in my uh, process on building my FTIR multi-touch table. Uh, this will be a quick little update. I just want to make sure that my videos are up to date as to what stage I'm at. I don't know if, if these are real specific stages like that you do a checklist with, but whenever I make some progress I'll try and make another video quickly. So, last thing I mentioned was the holes that I'm drilling in the aluminum uh, angle iron. Uh, the 1364 drill bit was perfect for the LEDs. What I did to make sure that I don't short out against the frame, I, uh, if that's even possible, with the uh, low current that we're running with, um, I just went with the safe way and decided to just basically put a strip of electrical tape all the way across and I ended up taking an X-Acto knife and just cutting a square out around each hole to leave some space around the edge of the hole. I didn't want to just poke a pencil or something through it because it would have made the hole smaller in diameter and the LEDs wouldn't fit. So this seems to work pretty well. It took it was time consuming, but I mean you got to put the effort in, right? So uh, I used some super glue that I picked up from a dollar store. I probably could have gone with some better stuff, but uh, I mean it worked. It was the gel stuff. At first I thought I'd use the liquid rather than the gel, but the gel worked actually really well. And uh, if you can see here, I can like, they're not moving. I can give it a tug and it's not moving. So they're in there pretty firmly. I left them probably 20 minutes by the time they were like firm enough in there. It wasn't an instant bond, like the bottle says it is, mind you. Um, this is plastic to aluminum, so I'm sure the glue needed time to harden. Worked out really well. Um, so the way I've uh, got it set up here is I've got the top and the bottom on my piece of acrylic, just to test it out, test out the size. Um, the acrylic I cut using a table saw. I had my dad help me because he's got one at his work. It was set up to cut wood though, so it was kind of a sloppy cut. Uh, you probably can't see it with this camera. Or well, maybe you can. If you look along here, you can see a little bit of chipping and stuff on the edge. Uh, it, it was a really rough, rough cut. Um, but it was the best I could manage, and it actually turned out quite well, because now I've polished the edges. I used uh, um, a... 3M headlight polishing kit, which I uh, found a YouTube video for, which I will post. I did the same process. I started with 120 grit sandpaper on a Black & Decker mouse, just a vibrating finishing sander, and I sanded all the edges with 120, then 180. Then I went to the 3M polishing kit and used my Black & Decker drill. Um, went from I found that the 500 grit didn't do anything different, so I went straight to 800, and then the 3000 grit sanding sponge thing, and then with the polishing compound. I kind of goofed up, um, because when I opened the package, some of the contents fell out, and I didn't notice it, but it, came, it comes with two uh, compounds for you to use to buff it with. There's like a waxing compound for protection, and a rubbing compound, which is what you would want to use for something like polishing an edge of acrylic. Well, I accidentally used the the polishing waxing compound instead of the rubbing compound because um, I didn't I couldn't find the rubbing compound because it fell out. I thought it didn't come with one, but um, the results are quite satisfactory. I think it will work just fine. I I've looked at videos where people are showing their polished edge and pictures and stuff like that on the wiki and it's kind of difficult to tell just how shiny things are but this is it's it's quite good I think even if I waxed it instead of polished it I think it will perform really well if I get this all together and it looks like it's not going to be good enough then I guess I'll just restart it around the 800 grit side of things and uh repolish it with the rubbing compound instead but I think it'll work pretty good uh, and then all I've got to do now is the same thing on the sides I plan to just 
cut this to length and drill the holes the same. I've got these uh, foam spacers in here. I think they're for like table legs and stuff like that. I bought them at Canadian Tire um, just so I can push the acrylic up a bit. My, my L brackets are three quarters of an inch tall. So I wanted to have them a little closer to the top, plus now it raised it right in line with my LEDs. Um, the LEDs are a little bit low, but that's okay um, for the edges because my frame is going to sit underneath. I'll have to make them all at least sixteenth of an inch higher on the edge so that when it goes underneath, I don't know if I can get a decent picture here. It's going to sit underneath like that, so I'll be sixteenth of an inch lower, and I'll have to drill a little higher in in here for when it goes on like this. And I'm going to put these little pads. I'm going to cut them so they're not in L's. I'm going to cut them so they they go all the way around, and then I'm actually going to drill some very small holes and bolt the frame to the acrylic. I'll just drill them right in the corner here. I've got some number. I think they're number six bolts. They're really small, but uh, I think enough of the acrylic is sitting on the aluminum frame that it should hold the weight just fine. I'll probably even drill them straight through the foam to get a bit of a better... Uh, to clamp down harder so I don't have a gap between the bottom of the acrylic and the top of the aluminum, if that makes any sense. So that's where I'm at now. I will continue on and post the next step when I get to it. Alright, so I finished my frame and I thought I'd show it to you. This turned out uh, as well as I'd have expected especially considering I didn't think I'd actually be able to do it this well. So I've got the sides on like I was mentioning before. They're overlapping and stick out underneath you can kinda see here. So this is actually a little bit lower than here uh, I'm going to do something later to cover the edges up and maybe send off these sharp points. It's not too much of a... I'm not worried about it right now. I'll get to it later. Because um, it doesn't have anything to do with the functionality of the table. So, just cosmetic stuff I'm not worried about. Um, I've got the holes, the holes drilled through the acrylic and bolted. If I can get back down here. and oh, it's a little dark. It'll come back to this end. You can see the bolts are sticking through. Um, I believe, like I said before, I think they're number six size uh, bolts. They came with a nut and I just bought some washers to go with them. So I've got the bolt washer on top. It goes down through the acrylic, through the foam, through the aluminum. And of course on the edges it goes through both aluminum brackets and then bolted down. So I've got them one in the center of each side. These longer ones I put one towards the edge and then on the end I've just got I've just got it held by the one in the center and then the two on the ends going through both uh, brackets where they meet. Most <clears throat> most of the examples I've seen where people are explaining their multi-touch tables when they're doing uh, FTIR or LED light plane or DSI uh, maybe not DSI as much because Enlighten has different properties as far as how far light travels through it but usually you see just an L shape like two sides done. I've got all four sides done here so I think it'll be very strong and I'll just be flooding my acrylic with lots of infrared light. I'm really optimistic about how well this is going to work and uh, now I just have to wire the LEDs together. I've got here my power supply, which I managed to get for free somehow because it was in a loose box of adapters at a local music store and it had no home. And they said it wasn't in the system, so just put it in my pocket. <laughs> so that's what I did. 18 volt, 2 amp. Uh, each of these LEDs draws 1.5 volts of power and uh, <clears throat> takes 100 milliamps of current. It took me a while to kind of figure out the calculations because I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of new at electronics, but 
It means that if I wire these up in series of 12 LEDs at a time with a low value resistor, like a 1 ohm resistor, in case of any accidental power spikes, that that should be fine. So I'll have a big series parallel system of um, 10 series circuits in parallel of 12 LEDs each, except for the last one, which will only be like 4, because I've got 112 LEDs all the way around. So I should draw one amp of power from this, which can supply up to two amps, and that should be good. Um, I'll show that when I finish it, probably in the next couple of days.